Hello, it's Vitality, and today we'll talk about bossa nova, the rhythm of that beautiful style of Brazilian jazz. We will learn a um, basic rhythm that's called partita alta, and I also will show you what else can you do with that rhythmic pattern, how can you change it in order to create variety of rhythms, and also in order to fit arrangement a little bit better. We will talk primarily about playing chords, but also those rhythms can be applied to solos, to practice routines. I recommend my students apply those rhythms for practicing their scales and arpeggios that they would use for improvise over tunes. So, um, first of all, I would uh, use two chord progressions. The one will be very common minor chord progression, another will be major chord progression. The minor chord progression simply will be just a, a four chord chord progression. It will be some kind of C minor. I don't know, it can be minor 9 or minor 6, 9, you know, or even minor 11 if you want. So from that point, it's going to be our C minor, or will be F minor, so it's the fourth chord, right? And then will be simple 2, 5, will be a D half diminished, minor 7 flat 5, you can again play any way you want it. And then will be a G altered dominant, here I play sharp 5, but you also can use a sharp 5 in conjunction with flat 9 and a sharp 9. So basic chord progression. One, four, two, five, right? It's used in many, many, many different tunes, so it's very common. Well, let me lay uh, down very quick a backing track that we're going to use uh, to play our rhythms over, and then we'll start to talk about our first pattern. Well, so, the first rhythmic pattern will be called partita alta. It's very common uh, rhythm and it consists of two measures, so it's two measure long pattern. It's usually used in the medium and up tempo bossa novas. So, uh, every measure you'll have a four strokes, or four times you'll play in a measure. And uh, in the first measure you will play on beat number one, two, then end of three, end of four. On the second measure you will do end of one, end of two, three, four. So the count will be one, two, and, 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 three, four. So if right now we'll try to clap that rhythm with the metronome, it will sound like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, 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 three, four. So that's our rhythm. If right now I'll take, um, I don't know, my chord, the first chord that I'll probably use in my bossa nova, so just a minor, uh, C minor nine or C minor six nine. Uh, if I'll try to play that chord right now with the count, so you'll hear how one chord will um, represent the entire rhythmic pattern, the partita alta pattern. So let's do it. One, two, three, four. It's pretty cool. Once again, if you study bossa nova, if you try to learn bossa nova before, you probably um, already run into that pattern, so it's a very common one. So what we'll do right now, I will uh, play uh, all chord progression of our minor basso, one, four, two, five bossa nova, uh, with that particular pattern. So some of the chords will stay the entire pattern, like your C minor, F minor, and some of the chords, like a D half diminished and a G altered dominant, will stay only just like one half of the pattern, because they only stay in one measure long. So, um, okay, let's do it, let's play it. Okay, now, when you learn that first pattern, it's not it. You can create a lot of different patterns from that one. What you need to do, you need to imagine that pattern being cycle. And now what you can do, you can establish a different place as your starting point of your new pattern. So in this case, what we're going to do, we'll go two beats later and consider uh, the end of beat number three in our partita alta pattern being actually right now the end of one, so it's going to be the beginning of our pattern. So pretty much what we're doing, we're taking our pattern and shifting it two bits earlier, and the first two bits will bring to the end. So right now the count 
of your uh, pattern will be end of one, end of two, end of three, end of four, and then second measure will be straight ahead quarter notes. One, two, three, four. So if I'll count this in time, it's gonna be like that. And, 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 and one, two, three, four. So if I'll do this with metronome, this is how it sounds. So here we go. One, two, three, four. And, 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 and one, two, three, four. It's a pretty cool pattern, you know? And uh, again, it creates like a syncopation right of the bat. So right now, if again, uh, I'll take my, uh, some kind of C minor chord that I would use in the bossa nova. And if I'll play that chord, just one chord with a pattern, you start to get a grasp on it. So let's do it. One, two, three, four. pretty cool, right? I mean, it creates some kind of bounce uh, feel straight ahead. I like that pattern a lot. So what we're going to do right now, I'll play the entire minor boss of chord progression with the pattern number two. So now, when uh, we already get the concept of shifting two beats in our partita alta pattern, we can continue doing that. And we can take previous pattern that we just created and shift uh, the starting point again two beats later. So pretty much right now, if you look on the original partita alta, the actually beginning of the second measure in that pattern will be right now the beginning and it will become a first measure. So from that point, you just took partita alta and move first measure to the end and a second measure to the beginning. So right now, the counting of uh, that particular pattern will be end of one, end of two, three, four, and the second measure will be one, two, end of three, and a four. So if I'll try to count this in time, it probably will sound like that. And, and three, four, one, two, and, and. And if I'll try to clap this with a metronome, this is how it will sound. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and, and three, four, one, two, and, and. It's pretty cool. Once again, if I'll take my some kind of C minor chord and play that chord with the pattern, let's hear how uh, just a chord will sound with that particular rhythmic pattern. One, two, three, four. It's pretty cool. I like that pattern a lot. Again, like a previous one, it creates like a syncopation straight ahead. So, okay, let's hear our minor bossa with uh, that particular pattern. So now we can continue creating permutations of partita alta by shifting two beats again. And pretty much right now, the second half of the second measure will become a beginning of our pattern. So the beat number three of measure number two in partita alta will um, turn into a beat number one. So pretty much we'll take two last beats of partita alta and move them up front. So right now uh, it's gonna be just a one measure of quarter notes played on each beat, so one, two, three, four. And then second measure will be completely syncopated eight notes, so it's gonna be end of one, end of two, end of three, end of four. So if right now I'll try to count that, it's gonna sound like that. One, two, three, four. And, 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 and. So if I'll clap that rhythm with the metronome, let's hear how it's gonna sound. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, 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 and. So right now, once again, I can take my first chord in uh, bossa nova, let's say like C minor nine, and try to play that chord with uh, the entire pattern. Let's hear how it will sound. One, two, three, four. Pretty cool, it's kind of like makes it uh, at the very beginning pretty simple, but then start to syncopate and create some kind of cool offset type of sound. Um, once again, right now, let's hear how the entire minor bossa nova chord progression will sound with that particular pattern.
Okay, now when you finish uh, creating different permutations of that Partita Alta pattern, what can you do? You can actually um, can experiment with it and let's say try to move not just the two beats like um, we just did, and let's say try to move one beat. So from that point you will be able to create four more different patterns when you will uh, establish uh, just a bit behind as um, your uh, beginning of the new pattern. So once again, it's, it's a huge field for experimentation and getting a lot of different rhythms out of just one simple pattern. But what else can you do and what I would like to show is sometime in certain situations you need to play pretty complex rhythmically and you need to create something asymmetrical, something not repetitive. So from that point what you can do, you can combine let's say two patterns or even three patterns or let's say all four patterns that we just created. So if I will take um, all four patterns and just to put them in order we will create one giant pattern that will be eight measures long. So from that point the counting of that pattern will be one, two, and, 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 and three, four, and, 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 and one, two, three, four, and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, four, and, 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 and. So if right now I'll clap that pattern with the rhythm, with the metronome, uh, let's hear how it sounds more in time. One, two, three, four, one, two, and, 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 and three, four, and, 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 and one, two, three, four, and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, four, and, 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 and. That's pretty cool, right? It creates some kind of tight and interesting pattern that just takes away that kind of repetitive motion, that kind of obvious repetition. Again, not always it will be applicable, but sometimes it will be a very handy tool. So uh, let me play um, the, our minor bassa. Actually, um, we have a uh, bassa nova that exactly eight measures long, so I will be able to fit the entire pattern we just created, that giant pattern, uh, over a chord progression. So let's do it. Let's hear how the bassa nova will sound with all patterns combined together. So, we just learned four patterns, partita alta based patterns, that are primarily used in the medium and up tempo. What if your composition is in a slower tempo? Now you can take that pattern and just speed it up twice. So right now you can take two measure long pattern and just to fit that pattern in one measure by shortening every note or make this uh, note that twice shorter or twice faster. So I will talk about that in a second, but let me show the chord progression that I would use. Because we will have only one measure long pattern, I'll take simple four measure long chord progression. This will be in a major, C major, just for simplicity. And uh, that chord progression, again, very common. You can see this in a lot of different bosses. So it's going to be uh, some kind of C major chord. I'm using here uh, C69. Then it will be a uh, D flat fully diminished. Then it will be D minor. And I do this D minor 9, you can do minor 11s and etc. And then I would use D flat dominant with a ninth degree. Again, theory wise, I don't want to make it too busy what it is, but it's very simple. Just a one, the diminished substitution for the five of two chord, then two chord itself, and a tritone of five chord. So pretty much it's kind of like pretty much one to five chord progression, but just with a little bit substitutions going on to make it kind of more uh, linear. So uh, once again, let me lay down the, some kind of backing track for that chord progression and then we'll start to talk about uh, other four patterns that we can um, create from speeding up Partita Alta. So now, we can uh, turn our Partita Alta into something that will work in a slower tempo and we can simply just uh, speed up that pattern twice and right now fit two measures and just one measure. So what we're going to do, we will uh, turn every note and every rest that we used to have in a Partita Alta in something that's twice faster. So from that point every quarter note will turn into an eighth note. Every eighth note will turn into a sixteenth note. 
every eighth rest will turn into 16th rest. So right now we'll take two measure long pattern and fit it in one measure. That will work very good in the slower tempos. So the counting of that pattern right now will be one end of one, E of two, A of two, E of three, A of three, four, and a four. So if I'll give you just a count of first kind of in time, it's going to be one N, E, A, E, A, four N. See so if I will do this with metronome, of course, it will sound more springy, more uh, with uh, groovy, more solid with the rhythm. One, two, three, four. One N, E, A, E, A, four N. So that's your rhythm. Of course, I can take the first chord um, of my bossa nova, right, major bossa nova, that I'll take here, C major, 6, 9, whatever, and just to try to play that chord with the pattern, so let's listen. One, two, three, four. It sounds pretty cool, right? It fills out time pretty well, even if it's a slower tempo. So let's hear how um, the entire chord progression will sound with that particular pattern. Well, now we can create the same type of permutations as we created from Partita Alta with that just one measure long pattern. What we're going to do here, we will uh, pretty much treat and consider every beat of that pattern as being beat number one. So when beat number one is beat number one, this is what we just did. But now let's move beat behind and consider our beat number two being the beginning of uh, our pattern. So right now our pattern will consist of the uh, e of 1, A of 1, E of 2, A of 2, 3, end of 3, 4, end of 4. So again, if I'll give you um, that rhythm, just first of all, it will sound like that. E, A, E, A, 3, and 4, N. So if I'll clap this with a metronome, it will sound, of course, a little bit more in time. 1, 2, 3, 4, E, A, E, A, 3, and 4, N. So that's our pattern. Again, if I'll take our first chord in the major bossa and I play this pattern with, it will sound like that. One, two, three, four. It's a pretty cool one, you know? Again, I like the syncopated pattern that start not on the beat. It creates some kind of cool offset type of groove, you know? I really like it. So let's hear how um, the entire chord progression of bossa nova will sound with that. Pattern. So now we continue to move ahead and creating new patterns. Now we will uh, go beat behind from previous pattern and create another one measure long pattern. In comparing to original pattern, we'll pretty much starting from the middle of it. So the new pattern will be uh, the E of 1, A of 1, 2, end of 2, 3, end of 3, E of 4, A of 4. So if I'll give you count of, it will sound like that. E, A, 2, and 3, and E, A. So let's do it in time. 1, 2, three, four, E, A, two, and three, and E, A. So again, that's a pretty cool one because it starts with that syncopated kind of feel straight ahead. And again, if I'll take my first chord in the bossa nova and play that pattern, you can start to hear how chords will sound with it. One, two, three, four. Pretty cool, right? Again, I like the syncopated patterns when they offset the beat right of the bat. So let's hear how the entire bossa nova will sound with that new pattern. Okay, and the last step of creating permutations of our one measure long pattern, it's of course considered beat number four of the original pattern being the beginning. So right now our count of here will be 
um, 1 end of 1, 2 end of 2, e of 3 out of 3, e of 4 out of 4. So if I'll give you the count of a little bit more in time, it will sound like that. 1 and 2 and e, a, uh, e, a. Uh. And let's do it with metronome. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 and 2 and e, a, uh, e, a. Uh. It's pretty cool, right? Again, uh, it's kind of like a start straight ahead, but then it starts to offset and gets a little bouncy. So uh, again, I can take my um, chord from the major bassa and try to play that chord with the pattern. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, let's hear how the entire chord progression will sound with it. So now, after we created four one measure long patterns, we again can combine them and create one long four measure long pattern. So, um, first measure in that pattern will be our first pattern. So it's one and of one, e of two, a of two, e of three, a of three, four and a four. Then second measure will be e of one, a of one, e of two, a of two, three and of three, four and a four. Then third measure will be e of one, a of one then 2, n of 2, 3, n of 3, e of 4, a of 4. And the last measure will be 1, n of 1, 2, n of 2, e of 3, a of 3, e of 4, a of 4. So if I'll try to count off that whole pattern, it will sound like that. 1, n, e, a, e, a, 4, n, e, a, e, a, 3, n, 4, n, e, a, 2, n, 3, n, e, a, 1, n, 2, n, e, a, e, a. So let's try to do this with a metronome. One, two, three, four. One and e a e a four and e a e a three and four and e a two and three and e a one and two and e a e a. So let's try to play the entire chord progression, major bossa nova chord progression, with that giant four measure long pattern. So now, after we created so many cool patterns, we can try to fit them to a possible musical situations when you have a very busy arrangement and you actually don't need to play too much. So from that point, you can take any of the patterns we've learned and try to subtract some of the beats from it. So for example, I will take one measure long pattern number one and I'll start to I'll remove something to create more spacey pattern. So once again, if you remember that pattern number one was one, end of one, e of two, a of two, e of three, a of three, four, and a four. So uh, once again, I'll clap this in time for you. One, two, three, four, one, and e, a, e, a, four, and. So now, um, in order to make it a little spacey, I would remove one thing at a time to just listen and uh, find the good combination of beats that will fit my arrangement. Again, it's a wide range for just imagination, thoughts and different experiments. So let's say I'll probably remove uh, the end of one. So my pattern right now will be just one, E of two, A of two, E of three, A of three, four and a four. So once again, uh, count will be one, e a uh, e a uh, four n. So let me do it uh, with a metronome. One, two, three, four. One, e a uh, e a uh, four n. And again, um, if I'll take our, our first chord and the major bass so that uh, C major six nine and play with it, let's uh, hear how that uh, pattern will sound. One, two. Three, four. So now definitely it creates a little bit more space, you know? So let's hear how the entire major bossa nova chord progression will sound with that pattern.
Well, now we can continue subtracting something from our pattern. And let's say remove the end of beat number four. So right now our pattern will turn into just beat number one, then E of two, E of two, E of three, E of three, beat number four. So the counting will sound like that. One, E, A, E, A, four. So let me do it with metronome. One, two, three, four. One, E, A, E, A, four. So now let's again take just the first chord of our major bassa and try to uh, play that new pattern with it. One, two, three, four. Sound pretty cool, you know? It's uh, again start to create more and more space. So let's hear how that uh, pattern will sound with entire major bossa nova. Well, now I can, I think, remove even one more uh, beat from that pattern. So let's say I would probably remove the E of beat number three. So let's say my pattern right now will be one, E of two, R of two, then R of three, beat number four. So the count off will sound like that. One, E, A, A four. So let me do it in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, A, A four. That's pretty cool. Now it actually creates a lot of space, a lot of dimension, and um, I can imagine some busy parts being fitted in that arrangement very easy. So let me play again. That's just the first chord with uh, our new pattern. One, two, three, four. That sounds pretty cool. I like it. I like it a lot. So now it definitely leaves more space for other instruments. So let's hear how that pattern will uh, sound with a major bassa. Well, now we have many cool bassa nova patterns and a ways to alter them and uh, actually fit better to arrangement you're playing over. Again, experiment with it, um, uh, try to create different permutations and alterations of those patterns. Uh, again, uh, here we didn't talk um, about using those patterns with uh, comping when you're playing chords on the bass line. That's probably a subject for another video. We didn't talk about how to use those patterns for improvising because, like I mentioned before, I highly recommend it, especially take that one measure long pattern and play it with um, your scales or arpeggios, or just in general try to solo with using those patterns. It will help you play more in style. But again, it's such a broad subject that probably deserves another video. So um, I hope you find useful uh, what uh, we just discussed and applicable for your music journey. So um, wish you luck with working on your Boston over rhythm patterns, and I'll see you in the next lesson.